<laughs> so I'm hoping what I'm covering now is useful to some people. Uh, let's see. They are all one. Oh, so question 20. I don't know if I've ever had a question on this. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is let me just go in order. I think there will be enough time for me to cover the whole assignment actually. So I'll just start out with the question one. And um, I think any multiple choice questions, I would skip, skip that for now. Uh, oh, and so this is the multiple answer question. <laughs> so let me just do this question properly. It says, choose all statements below, which correctly, and there are two possibilities here for questions of this type, defines or describes. So some of the correct choices will be what I call a matter of definition, and some of them might be describing a property of wave velocity or wave speed. So um, hint to, in cases like this, we'll usually say review the section because that's where you'll find the necessary information. Let me first check the correct answer here. The correct answer should be, um, so it's describing the property of wave velocity. It's, a, it's a generally independent of wave frequency or wavelength. So that's one of the choices. Wave velocity is a speed at which that's not right. So I'm gonna not select that. Wave velocity is the speed at which a disturbance travels through a medium. And uh, another word for this is a, a speed at which wave propagates. This description here is the description of wave propagation. Uh, wave velocity is faster for higher frequency. Uh, no, <laughs> wave velocity is larger for a large amplitude. No, and I think uh, uh, if you watch the videos on uh, wave velocity, actually, you know that these last two are incorrect. So let me submit here. And um, yeah, I guess um, the speed at which masses that make up the wave move, um, I guess that's the one that could be potentially confusing or um, unclear what those particular <laughs> arrangement of words mean. I think one thing I can show you is with a simulation. Um, you have seen this uh, in one of the recorded videos. This is one of my favorite uh, simulations. You've seen me <laughs> use this in a recorded video. And let me just use the pulse one here. And, whoops, ah, okay. Um, so let me just do a slow motion so that I have more time to talk. So when it talks about, uh, when the question talks about the, masses that make up the wave move, you can actually see it here. There are these beads that make up the wave, and you can see that these beads are moving up and down. So there's that speed at which these beads move up and down. And um, that's not what we refer to as wave motion. That's just regular motion. And wave motion is really the motion of the shape. It's a triangular shape that's moving across that's what we are calling wave motion. So, all right, uh, let me keep going. So question five, um, choose the statement. Oh, so this is another multiple choice question and I'll be skipping this. Um, so another multiple choice, I'm skipping that. Oh, this is a fun one. <laughs> so I'm covering this definitely. It says, choose all expressions which correctly relate different quantities involved in wave propagation. V stands for speed, F for frequency, lambda. This is a Greek letter. Uh, uh, we call lambda, stands for wavelength, and T stands for wave period. Oh, by the way, um, I guess since you might be seeing Greek letters now, the textbook actually has a table that leads to all these uh, useful information. Let me take this opportunity to kind of point you to it so that you know where you can find that. It's uh, at the end of the textbook under useful information. That's why I was calling it useful information. And it's got a bunch of tables uh, like a physical constant and you don't have to, oh, <laughs> it, um, um, so you don't have to memorize most of this. The um, uh, and the um, and this is the table of the Greek letters. So let me continue on. Um, 
Okay, so I'm gonna cover this one. So what I'll be doing is, uh, let me first write down some of the expressions that are useful for, for you to know. The, um, so I, let's see, and uh, I'll be, so I guess this is where I, um, it's a kind of, it helps you to be able to do some algebra. I, you know, in this class, we try to minimize algebra requirements, but you know, algebra is one of the recommended math, math classes. So the expression I uh, do use a lot and like to have memorized is this one for wave speed, saying that wave speed is equal to uh, wave frequency times wave length. And I have a way I actually memorize this uh, expression. I use units or what's sometimes called a dimensional analysis. I know the wave speed comes in units of meters per second. I know the wave frequency comes in units of hertz or in basic SI units, one over second. And I know that wave length comes in the unit of meter. So when you work out the units on the right hand side, it matches the unit of the left hand side. And it doesn't always work out that way, but in the case of this particular useful equation, when you uh, uh, assemble this combination that without any extra factors like one half that uh, makes the unit work out, that is the correct expression. So, um, so this is one of the uh, expressions that you should know. And then there are some other miscellaneous things that you should know, especially because it mentions the wave period. You should know that um, wave period is a reciprocal of wave of frequency. So, um, so yeah, I'm gonna be selecting choices based on knowing these. So let's see here. Oh, oh it looks like uh, a lot of this will be based on this expression here. So first let me look if I see, ah, that one is exactly a copy of that. And it looks like I'll need uh, multiple versions of this. Um, I don't know if there's a quick way to do it that, well, uh, let me at least do, uh, write down this version that um, kind of, so this also means that frequency is one over period. And I can put this into that equation to get on another equation that's uh, equivalent to that. Uh, speed is, wave speed is equal to one over time times wavelength or lambda over the wavelength. So this will be another one that should be correct, might be in the list, let's see. Wave, speed, yeah, lambda over t. So there are those two. Now, I'm pretty sure if you simply say submit question at this point, um, you'll only be partially right. Let me give that a try and see. Yeah, and that's because there are other expressions that are equivalent to these that you still need to quite select. <laughs> so let me just check each one of them. So I have this lambda is equal to V over T. If I solve this for V, I get lambda times T, which is not the same as that. So, okay, this is not it. Uh, this expression, uh, T is equal to lambda times V. If I try to solve for V, then it becomes period over lambda, which is reciprocal of that. So that's not it. Let's keep going. <laughs> um, this one, uh, I think I can see immediately kind of comparing this to that, that they don't look uh, like they're equivalent. So skip that. Uh, same thing here. This, like these two kind of clearly are not equivalent. So I have this one here. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Here, if you solve for V, you get lambda over T. And that is uh, this here. So yeah that I should have selected that. Uh, lambda is equal to three times T. Or um, you can kind of imagine doing that here. Um, you have this expression here, which if you solve it for lambda, then it becomes lambda is equal to three times T. And that's what you have there. I needed that. Okay, let's keep going. T is equal to uh, lambda over V. Oh yeah, this is actually same as that. You can imagine solving for V here. So V goes on the other side, uh, uh, on the numerator, T comes uh, on the denominator here. So they are actually equivalent to each other. 
Okay, um, and this one, I think if you solve it for V, that will be equal to uh, F times lambda. And finally, this one, yeah, that's not it. Okay, so I selected the five, should be correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is, um, um, so I try not to have questions like this too much in this class, questions that require algebra, but it still helps, <laughs> especially, yeah, it, it still helps. Okay, let's keep going. Um, clear all drawings, next question, question 10. Okay, this is another multiple answer question, so I will go over this in detail. And, um, and you know, you can always uh, check to see if a question is a multiple answer question or not by kind of selecting that. I, yeah. Okay, uh, wave speed, frequency, they're all related, okay. Does not tell you if uh, one of these, uh, choose all statements below which correctly describe the change of these quantities in specific examples of waves. Yeah, I think it's, this is one of those where you actually have to read the section. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's why I hint to point, links you out to these um, different scenarios. So, um, yeah, to know which uh, quantity remains constant, you have to know something about the situation. And one of the, so if it's something involving standing waves, then there's something specific about standing waves that you should be aware of. And if it's something about sound waves, then that's a section there. So, um, so you can read those sections on your own. I will go with what I remember about those things. Okay, so in a sound wave, okay, that's one of the scenarios. If the wave speed decreases, hmm, oh, oh, going from one medium to another, then the wave length remains. So yeah, you should read the section. With the most examples of sound waves, uh, what you will see is that uh, once the wave frequency is determined at the source, then it's the frequency that remains the same throughout the whole phenomena. There are some situations like a Doppler effect, but that's different. Um, so it'll be the wave frequency that stays the same and the wavelength that changes. So this is incorrect. I'm not going to select that. In a standing wave, if the wave speed increases, uh, right, if the string is tightened, then speed increases. Uh, wavelength remains the same and the frequency increases. Yeah. So here, this is where you have to remember with the standing wave, what determines the resonant wavelength or wave is the wavelength, kind of what length that fits into the mid, um, the thing that sets up the standing wave. So yeah, wavelength remains the same and it's the frequency that'll change. Let me just make sure, yeah, yeah. According to this algebraic relationship, frequency should increase. It could have said a decrease, that's why I want you to be sure. Um, in water waves, if the wave frequency increases, more frequent disturbance of water, then the wavelength and wave speed increases. Mm. Um, well, for one, I don't think wave speed will increase. So just gonna leave it. <laughs> it's not correct. <laughs> In a standing wave, if the wave speed decreases uh, when the string is loosened, the wave speed wavelength decreases. Uh, wavelength remains the same. That was that choice there. In a sound wave, if the wave speed increases, then the uh, yeah frequency remains the same and the wavelength would increase. Oh yeah, yeah, increase because. One, that algebraic relationship, and I'm trying to think of it in more um, conceptual idea that um, in the same amount of time, one period, it would travel a, a longer distance, so the wavelength would increase. Yeah. So those two are the correct choices. And um, you know, this, uh, questions like this, is a, it's a basically a reading check. If you've read these sections thoroughly and understood them, then hopefully as you're reading through this, um, kind of, uh, correct choices make sense. Okay, let's keep going. Choose all statements below, which correctly describe nodes and antinodes are they are important features of standing wave. That's why the hint refers you to standing waves. And there is actually an essay question on standing waves and dealing with the nodes and antinodes. So read that, do that assignment. I'm just going to answer the correct answer here. And I guess I move on. Um, nodes are zero disturbance, right? Antinodes are the opposite of the nodes, so maximum displacement. Um, 
there's no yeah annihilation. There's a like a particle and antiparticle, but that's more of a modern physics, not atoms and atoms. I think that's why I wrote that choice, but it's not correct. Positions of nodes and antinodes are uh, no. Um, sometimes I write choices that are just. I, Sometimes I think I'm trying to be ridiculous when I write the wrong choices. That's why I'm just saying no, because none of this makes any sense. <laughs> the positions of nodes and antinodes do not change over the cycle of the wave. Yeah, actually, I like to say uh, nodes and antinodes are what standing in a standing wave, because it's their positions that remain the same, and it kind of sets the standing shape of the standing wave. Um, nodes are the end points of the standing wave, which um, end points can be nodes, but not quite. You can have nodes that are not end points, and you can actually set up the end point in a way that it's not a node. So, yeah. All right, let's keep going. Um, 